All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Grand Blue Radio. This is episode number 232. Um, we are in the middle of Dread Barrage, which, I mean, there's not too much to talk about with Dread Barrage. It's pretty much exactly the same as before, but we can talk about that first, DJ. We can talk about uh, um, characters first, but, well, first things first. Welcome to Grand Blue Radio. This is Vibrating Shape, uh, your admin and translator over at Grand Blue underscore EN. Uh, we are we are at the end of the quiet times, DJ. It was a nice uh, it, it was nice while it lasted. I mean, some of the news that's come out so later this week, like the new Grand Blue versus character, or the new character for summer, or yeah, um, the quiet times have ended. Uh, we, I enjoyed them. Uh, I got a lot of uh, Slay the Spire done. I, I I read about half of the Count of Monte Cristo. It was it was a good break while it lasted, but we're back in high gear because there's a lot to there's a lot to do. Uh, there's not necessarily a lot to talk about, but do you want to talk about characters first, or do you want to talk about um, the event first? Talk about Dread Barrage because it's already here, and uh, well, should be fast to talk about. All right, so DJ um, Dread Barrage has basically two changes, and really it's just one and a half changes. So Dread Barrage is back. We're up against the dreaded uh, Elil style of boss, where they just give themselves a dodge uh, dodge buff, and you just see zeros all over the place. We see, we, you know, we've seen that, and also with, with the tower uh, stuff, with the stupid bugs as well. Yeah, so it's just, it seems to be something that they just really want to give like wind enemies, it just they just make them dodge. So it's right easy. So the big the big news is that they've added token draw to Dread Barrage. Yeah, that one's that one's new. That is that is a hundred percent new. And so the thing about that one is nothing else was changed about the reward structure. They purely added stuff on. So, uh, like like. I go to my badges. Uh, that's the same. The c number of certificates is the same. Like you, I've gotten twenty certificates from this, just like I've gotten twenty certificates from the previous dread barrages. Um. And like, let's see here. I mean, we one of the things that happened with the last dread barrage was that there was like no reason to keep going after a certain point. Yeah, I mean that is that is true. So the thing about the token draw here is that it is designed differently from um Unite and Fight because we're it's already going to assume that you can get twenty weapons of your choice, right? And so uh there's draw boxes one through twenty where you um are allowed to get weapons. And then it would uh, also be allowed to get like Damascus pinches and stuff. And then when you go through 21 through 40, and when you get to 41 and above, uh, you start hitting the like 45 box rules where it's just like, it's now four tickets. It's now six tickets to open these things up. And uh, let me go take a look at the numbers. Someone posted the numbers on how many tickets of everything it takes to, to get through these. Um, I mean, it still allow it allows the ability to forty box. It does, and so th that's basically what I was thinking about when it comes to why they added this. Because we were talking about dread barrages being like a supplement to unite and fight, right? And that's that's the design. Um, but twenty weapons per dread barrage, when you're not like us and you've already done it. Well, even if you are us, um, it takes forty of them to six star an eternal now. So and you, it already, it already took forty to, in order to uh, five star one. Yeah, if, unless you wanted to use an extra gold brick. And so you know we were we were complaining about how a lot of these rewards are throttled by them giving you a break and not letting you uh, overextend yourself on dread barrage and unite and fight right. But now it's just like okay, you can do the exact same things, but you get more weapons out of it now. And so uh, I already made it through box one. Uh, box one is 1,600 tickets. 
Boxes 2 through 4 are 2,400 tickets. Boxes 5 through 20 are 2,000 tickets to get through, right? Mm -hmm. So those are very familiar numbers. Boxes 21 through 40 take 10,000 tickets each. So it would take much more mash than I have done in this event total in order to get boxes 21 through 40. Especially since there's no honors bonus like there is in Unite and Fight to get extra tickets. Mm -hmm. And then boxes 41 and beyond are 15,000 a box. So in order to open the first 20 total, it is 40,800 tickets. Um, and what do you think about that? Like, is this something that really registers to you? Is this something that sort of is nice, is not nice? Like, what do you think? Yeah, I still haven't registered how many I actually get for clearing a five-star raid. Uh, true. The five-star raid, uh, because we don't have, like, um, the, the mental reference for, oh, yeah, so if I do this and I MVP it, then I get this many. It's like 100-something or something like that. Uh, it's fine uh, for past the tw uh, first 20 boxes, though, mm -hmm. because of the fact that you realistically, if you want to, you're you're going to before your box using the certificates and then the uh, and then the boxes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a realistic goal. Well, realistic uh, uh, in our perspective goal. Right. And then uh, so I've earned, what, 16, 17,000 tickets so far just Cat, for my definitions of casual mashing, I currently have two million honors, which, if we said that out loud, would just be, <laughs> uh, uh, for other things, it's just like, did you do a raid yet? <laughs> well, they that was something that we didn't talk about yet, which is they lowered the numbers by uh, by uh, by a ratio. They they cleanly cut two zeros off of the end of every number for everything that you do in Dread Barrage for honors. Doesn't make sense to have those extra zeros, to be honest. Let's be honest. The the number inflation was pretty real. Um, and because they designed the new um, UI here to tell you like where everything is coming from, I'm pretty sure. Like we've talked about this in crew, but while I'm saying this out loud loud for the public is that before this screen was really ugly like it would say crew and then there would be like a nine digit number or a ten digit number and then individual and it wouldn't say individual it said indiv and yeah. had a, 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 a smaller number because that's what would fit in the second box and things like that and so anyway um the way that this works now uh, it's the same way it works before. It's just that it fits more cleanly into this little box that they they created. So um, the honors change is a, is pretty much a nothing change. Although you know it shows that they're still willing to work on the uh, the interface and like the way that they give you info. So that's that's good. <laughs> oh man, w would you be okay with a great number crunch where they just divide everything? in the game by a hundred. Like not everything, but all of the honors numbers. I mean it wouldn't work for certain things because of the fact that some uh, like you get low you're you're you get like only a, a couple of uh, honors for some uh, for some things you do like joining or uh, joining a raid a raid and you did a, a button you got ten ten honors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't get you can't get a tenth of an honor. You're right, but it's so funny going into the one star, and you're like, hmm, this thing has you know a good, what is this, uh, eight million, nine million health, and it's like, how much honor did you get? Two hundred and seventy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It it feels like being new again. Um, but yeah, so. The thing about this uh, Dread Barrage is, yeah, I feel like this was done specifically because they listened to people complaining about how hard it is um, to pace yourself properly for farming a six-star Eternal. Because, yeah, the whole part where you need to provide the silver star fragments again, or the, whatever, the star fragments, the weapon fragments, that's 
a whole lot of weapons or you're throwing a gold brick at it and it's still you know one weapon and if you're trying to get multiples of these characters up to six stars and you haven't you know mashed mindlessly in uh, unite and fight for years then yeah this it's it's tough to get to those numbers in a reasonable amount of time because it's been how many months since the last Dread Barrage? It's been four months since the last Dread Barrage. It's been a while, yeah. And then Unite and Fight before this was like... Was it uh, April? Or was it March? <laughs> Let's see. It was a big it's gap. It's been a while. <laughs> Time has passed differently in the pandemic, so let's just take a look at Unite and Fight. And the last one was April. Yeah, it was April. And yeah, so it's uh it is something that they I think that they needed to do and they addressed it. So I think that's uh that's pretty much it for Dread Barrage on my end. Yeah. Um Otherwise we continue to mostly like chill and just help each other out and we're just all full autoing things and we're not fighting against a big number. So that's a that's a positive. I still like the uh, the way that Dread Barrage works compared to a lot of other things. Yeah, we're not try actively trying to compete against something else. We're if we're competing against a number, not not a not someone else who's also competing against a higher number. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. So while this thing, uh, goes ahead and, whoops, ah, ah, sorry. There we go. So we're moving on. <laughs> I I have a bookmarked page that I needed to uh, tab over to, but uh, I'm just going to let um, Dread Barrage play itself in another window while we move on and uh, change the subject. All right. So last week, hours after uh, the um, the Grand Blue Radio um, end of episode talk. Uh, we got ourselves the character that everyone was expecting. Mm -hmm. He woke up from his coma. He is as good as they were hoping, uh, they being Nehan fans from last year. And uh, uh, let's see here. Where do you want to start with this with this boy, DJ? First off. Why? I'm still I'm still laughing at the fact that we're just we're at this rate we're just getting print uh, supplemental damage on every element. I mean, they've Bring. they've seen that it's popular. They've seen that it's a way to give extra power, and then they're like, okay, we can't keep this to just one element, right? That's that's my thought on it at least. Uh, Aguavale says hi. So does EO. Real benefits way better. <laughs> While true, we're gonna. All right, all right. So we're so you wanted to start with the skills. So let's go. So <clears throat> his his CA. Talk about the weapon, but yeah, oh, let's weapon. talk about. It. All right, let's talk with about the weapon then. Let's go into here, the radiant Rinne. So we put tampering again, and this time we also put Fandango this time instead of uh, just. Uh, small attack like uh Kumbira Spear is. Well Kumbira Spear is one short of being a grand weapon. Like they, they took they specifically took away this little tiny thing from um World Ender. Uh what's World Ender's secondary skill again? It is it should be Fandango. So it really is just World Ender, but it's uh in light. Yes. And it's a harp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it about it. Fandango. Yeah, well, it's a good thing the triple tag doesn't really matter that much in the long run. Half the time. The, it, well, yeah, it it means that you're not playing with Nehan because of this. Uh, these uh, these skills are pretty good. They're uh, they're they're a little pushed. Yeah, let's, go, let's look at uh, Nehan stuff. All right, so here we have we start with Enlightenment. It's skill one. Um, everybody gains Zen, and Zen does the following things. So it's attack up, which is 30% on a unique mod. Utility mod. 
perpetuities, technically, yeah. Um, it's not normal, is the important part. Uh, it's 50% chaser, which, you know, it's the fairy number, and he doesn't eat all of your meter for it. But there is another price to pay, but, you know, there's we'll, we'll get to that later. The, the new part is that he gives uh, 50k supplemental damage to all the things that you do. And we've talked uh, okay. very extensively about how much that helps. And then... It's not the skills, too. Great. Yeah. And then it also gives you minus 100% debuff resistance. Which... That's... I guess that's to counter also... Uh, what's her face? Mishra? Mishra's. Because hers is 100% uh, debuff resist. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, the sharp hit to debuff resistance, is it is a thing that can matter, but there are things that also just counteract it, even within his own kit, and not we're not even talking about, like, the other light characters who are just amazing against debuffs. So, yeah, this skill uh, is on a 10-turn cooldown, but his cooldowns are very, uh, I wouldn't say fake, <laughs> they're... They're pretty real, though. They are pretty real. Yeah. Um, so then we have the Six Wolf Tonic. And the Six Wolf Tonic is everybody triple attacks, except for him. So all, it has... We, we, do, we do note that this is all everybody else. All other. So then we have um, guaranteed triple attack, 100% meter gain up, no help with uh, having the other people CA for him in order for him to get meter. Mm -hmm. 30% dodge rate up. 70% defense down. Uh, they can do uh, triple damage. You gotcha. And just so, don't you know, get hit? They, just be they become predators. He just makes your entire team into predators. This, is la this lasts three turns, and it's a six-turn uh, cooldown. Or it's not sorry, ten it's a ten turn cooldown. I'm pretending it's six because of the things that uh, happen later, but we're we we got to we've gotta get the entire picture before we get to that. So then then there's Nirvana. Another ten turn cooldown. It only lasts one turn. Only it lasts only one turn. <laughs> and it's everybody attacks uh, everybody else gains double strike. So we put that all together. It's fifty percent chaser, it's triple attack it's double strike um basically the only thing that he doesn't give is an uncap out of all of these things and then uh his support skills so he has low defense he has low and you're not gonna talk about where you he lowers everybody's health too oh yeah that part that's the other th price is that you lose 30 percent of your maximum HP down to a ma maximum of ninety percent. The uh, the and make sure to keep the, remember that because of uh, certain loops. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Vazaraga and Nier. Uh, so yeah, like he's based on a bunch of different uh, like doctor um, skills. Well, this one is the most clearly based on a doctor skill, um, but it's all just like super buffs significant drawback that it's fairly easy to work around especially since when he, with his supports um as long as he's as he starts the battle in front then your entire team gets guts so they get to survive for one turn when they would normally die okay okay um when he dodges he does counter claw he has a high dodge rate his high dodge rate is actually let's see here i know percent around the percent yeah, yeah. And so, uh, that is quite the package. <laughs> and then when he actually CAs himself, he does not have a damaging CA. He has a heal, which is 2,500. Remove a debuff, which can often be important because when they're... Yeah, like, 100% debuff, debuff resist down. Yeah. Uh, it's another 15% boost charge meter, which, you know, stacks up with... Uh, does it stack up with this? Actually, I can't remember how charge meter... Yeah, uh, oh, it wait, should, it's not... Because it's, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, a flat, a it's, a, it's, a, it's not a flat 15 either. Yeah, it's a, it'll be 30 when they are, um, whatchamacallit, uh, it, when you are 6 wolf tonic he, he he also benefits from that then because it says all allies, not all the allies. Yep, he gives himself meter from that one. And then there's a 3 turn cut to his skill cooldowns. 
So you put that all together, like all together. Have you seen any of the videos that are just seeing how much they can push the envelope with Nehan? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, where it's like, and so the first four turns of the fight, we're all double striking with triple attacks because, you know, when you have 100% extra meter and you triple attack, that gives you 74 meter. And if you started with 30, then that means the second attack after that is a CA. And so when things like that happen and you say you use him with a character who can also boost uh, his own meter, then crazy things happen. Um, there are videos again of Nehan teams against like a punching bag, which is what I currently consider Avatar to be until 10%. And it's just like from mashing all of these, you know, supplemental damage, triple attack, double strike, um, various things that all just synergize together in order to make your entire team go crazy. You do like... 70% of Avatar's uh, health in those, like, three or four turns? It's a lot. All right. Yeah, that's fair. He, uh, he, 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 he enables. He enables. Uh, there's a question in chat. Does Veil block debuffs, or is it one time 100% debuff resist with no duration? Uh, Veil blocks them. It prevents them from ever happening. Uh, notably... Um, it is, yeah, it is not 100% debuff resist. Because if you have debuff resist down, Veil still blocks it all. Uh, they they have other debuffs in the game that specifically say they go through Veil instead. So, and then another... Right, there's, also deb there's also debuffs that actually go through 100% de uh, debuff resist. Also true, too. Belial. Belial has that. Cagliostro has that. <laughs> Uh, uh, one of those ones that works in your favor as a uh, player. Her skill, her skill three, where where she says you don't get to act. Mm -hmm. I don't care if if you have like you can't take debuffs, you can't act. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, so there's a bunch of combos with Nehan. Like people are comboing him with uh, Jean because if you with the number of times that she triple attacks, uh, because of her double strike, you can have her uncap ready. I believe on turn three which is a pretty high at, or turn two or three, which is a, a decent bit ahead of schedule. Um, let's see here. I think that's the, uh, the book that I have on him. Like this character is extremely crazy on offense and on defense, yeah. on defense, uh... you probably won't use him. If you're, if you're, that's why the I found it funny where he's like, the uh, the ranking was SS and then under long fights B. Yeah, that's true. Like his ranking on full auto is really good because all of these are just yellow buffs and everybody turns into a monster. Yep. Um, on short fights he's a monster, and then, like, you know, we we talked a lot about how things like losing thirty percent hit points to Belial or losing percent hit points to um, various other effects. Like it didn't end up really mattering that much, but this one apparently is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you you had better end the fight before you have five thousand maximum hit points. Yeah, otherwise uh, you're not in a pretty spot at that point. You get one turn to survive what at one. Yes, and then after that you're like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, how how hard did Bilal hit you last time you played? He hit he hit Tanya for sixty seven thousand. <laughs> That's more than five thousand, Dom. It's it's more than sixty thousand. Yes, it's more than. It's, it was quite the number. You can look at my archives. And you can hear me go, "Oh crap! What happened?" I, remember, I watched that. <laughs> Bilal hit so hard. It was it was actually kind of funny when it happens to me. All right, um, but yeah, so that's Nahan, quite the character. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there are also videos of him like being combined with. Yeah, it was Masquerade. Yeah, ma it was like Masquerade, Luchador, uh, a lot of the usual suspects. They just all are going like Mega Ham with uh, with Nahan. 
Uh, I think it's, uh, hmm, what, what would I describe it as? I think it's about time that, that light could go ham like that. All right, and then there is one more character to talk about who released uh, last week, DJ. Let's go find her. Uh, yes. Included. She who was once a tree. Character. She's still a tree. I know. She she got better, but she remained a tree while getting better. But you know what? She she lost something very important, DJ. Uh, where is she? Uh, oh. Humanity, because she's she's an other now instead of a human. No, she lost her really big hat. Wait, what is? Is that Pengi? Yes, it is Pengi. Okay, like I, my eyes crossed for a second. Like, why can't I find Lena right now? I'm just Earth Lena. <laughs> Earth Lena, she's around here somewhere. She's got a flower. There it is. Oh, you know why I couldn't find her? It's because her her hat is missing. She lost her really big hat, and I just couldn't recognize her anymore. Wow. So, there's been this like trend of creating um, full auto friendly healers, and uh, so DJ, you you've used Diantha the most out of all of us. Uh, do you yeah. consider Diantha to be a full auto friendly healer? Yeah, because she heals on CA. All right, and so here we go with Lena, who is a different kind of uh, full auto healer, and it's a little interesting because it's not on her CA for once. So let's go through this kit. So number one, you mentioned it already. She is no longer human. It's one of the few Another. examples of a character changing types over the course of the game. I think Rosetta is the only other one because she was she hiding from the other to, to primal. Yeah, yeah, she was hiding the fact that she was a primal for a while. Um, and then so I'm I'm just gonna get straight to the point on here. So she has a chance to activate her heal at the end of each turn based on the number of allies debuffs. That's her like full auto healing method. Um according to uh the wiki, mm -hmm. it's around a twenty five percent chance and increases by number of debuffs, uh which is about fifteen percent per debuff. So most reasonable fights in the game will give you about three debuffs at once, and that's considered like standard not necessarily like the nasty ones like the nasty ones are things like anubis which gives you a ton of them at once but um when we're looking at say neutral fights um like lucilius tries to give you what three of them it's like zombie slash and blind or something like that at the same time it's what it's it's three that is what i remember for lucilius trying to slap debuffs on you. yeah for iblis I remember the slash, and I remember. Actually, I only remember the slash, really. All right, hold on. I'm gonna. Look I remember up. the zombie is is from when uh, when you're past a certain percentage, and oh, the the apple. the apple. Yeah. All right, let me look up Iblis and see what it inflicts. It is, it tries to fear, weaken, and slash you. So it is three. It's just that most of the time, uh, you have enough debuff resistance passively that you. Don't get all three of them at once. But if you did ha take all three of them, then Lena would have a, let's see, 25 plus 45, about a 70% chance to pre air at the end of the turn. Uh, it is a, it, the thing this is a number of allies, Devos, in total. So. Wait. Oh. Oh. I read that. Wrong. How, that's, how, that's how I'm reading this. By an additional 1% per debuff. Number of allies is debuffs. Yeah, so let's just say that you know you uh, get about five landed on you, which is a pretty reasonable number when he's trying to slap those on every single character. Then she'll just do it. <laughs> I really like that. I really like that design. Then I I cool. totally misread uh, and misinterpreted how number of allies debuffs was because Zahek counts them only on himself because he only clears them off of himself, and I think that's the only like example of that that we have. In this, uh, in, in reacting to what's on you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I think that is a cool way of doing it. Where the more uh, that you need her to heal, the more likely she is to heal. So uh, the rest of the kit, 
let's see here. So it's six hit nuke, earth defense down. Uh, and when she has her CA bu debuff on them, then um, it'll activate twice. Hey, uh, that's important. Debuff on the enemy. Her first, her first uh, passive is that uh, there's drain, what five hundred drain? That's whatever. But also thirty k supplemental damage. So let's see, what supplemental damage comes from Earth characters so far? Is this some of the first? I mean, if you don't, if you don't want to care, think about tempering. Or yeah. uh, let's take a look. Element sources of supplemental damage. Do, 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 do. Fire, water, earth. So Cagliostro. Oh, that's right. The redesign Cagliostro does it. Um, Halloween Eustace and Grand Leona and Chicken. Oh, of course, Chicken has it. It's always Chicken. <laughs> it's always Chicken. Chicken has everything. Uh, Soros does it to himself. Threo does it to herself. But so you know, this is competing against. Chicken, we're going to try not to think about competing against Chicken because we've always said that that's a losing, uh, a losing prospect. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, actually... Also, you, uh, I mean, Eustace also has some little damage to, uh, to all, all allies. Mm -hmm. so, so there was more competition than I thought there was uh, for this one. But anyway, um, given that it's... Uh, let's see... I need to look up stacking because all of this stacking stuff, there's so many rules. So it does not stack with chicken drum beats, and it is the only thing that it doesn't stack with in Earth. Okay, unfortunate. That's that's a that's an unfortunate one. Thanks, Game With, for testing this. I guess the good news is that the uh, it's technically better. Technically, not actually. It's 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 better number wise, but the entire package is one of those things where you're like, oh, that's unfortunate. I mean, it only, it only lasts two turns, so yeah, it it, it's not permanent. Turns. It's not permanent like her her uh, wind version. Um, the the thing that helps you keep it up is um le, this the green hand here. I'm not gonna massacre the French, uh, where she sucks up other uh like she does the Amira slash um Ingve thing where she sucks your team's meter into herself. And then for five turns after that, you get extra healing and uh, you get reduced incoming damage. And so, let's see, the reduced incoming damage, according to this, is 50% reduced damage, which is actually really good. And then a thousand boost to healing cap, which is it synergizes with the rest of her kit, so it makes her drain an actual real drain. Mm -hmm. So it turns it into a fifteen hundred drain. Oh, her her uh, charge bar gain also. What's the charge know, bar she, gain? She, she if she gets forty percent from every, every uh, character, she uh, she sucks from. So she doesn't uh, suck all of it, which was the uh, the Amira. She, Amira actually, I think, sucks all of it. She takes ten percent and turns it into forty for herself. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see here. The amount of charge bar landing games depends on how much allies she is absorbed charge bar from. So yeah, ten to forty. Okay. That's, That's a nice. way better design than just I suck it all. They redesigned how Amira's worked a while ago, didn't they? Let's take a look. I don't so remember. Power within. It's ten percent of everybody. It is ten percent to everybody, but then it reduced to five. That's what it was. So I believe they redesigned that at some point, but I can't remember anymore. It's been a long time. Well, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean that's that's pretty much the kit. Like. <laughs> She can accelerate her, her uh, what's it called? She can accelerate her uh, cooldowns by, uh, by seeing too, so that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And if you're not playing full auto, it's on a, her heels on a four turn cooldown, which is not that bad. It's pretty, it's you're really probably, good. You're mostly using it for getting rid of debuffs at that point. Yeah, and given that she also has that chance of just getting rid of all of them anyway, not all of them, but like just casting on consecutive turns, just going, no, no more debuffs on my team, then, uh, 
I, this is a cool kit. I like it. I just wish that there were... Um, that the supplemental damage thing was uh, a little easier to take advantage of, given that it's only two turns out of however often that she CAs. Which, you know, whenever she casts the green hand, then uh, she'll do it, and then it cuts the cooldown, so she has that synergy going. So, you know, it's not so bad. It's, it's a pretty interesting way to do all of this. Anyway, cool cool character, Letta. Yeah. Uh, I'll get her. Uh, I do I do appreciate that her weapon actually has actually has the like, grace on it. So there's more uh more sources of like debuff resists. Mm -hmm. Like just being existing. Yeah. Um I am okay with giving uh, more tools to help survive a whole lot of um a whole lot of damage coming in. I do wonder why it has skill cap on it, but I'm just not going to question that anymore. You know, because Lena can give you some mental damage. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So that is uh, the two new characters they put out. Um, and then I'm going to let you drive on this next part, DJ, because they uh, also released very recently uh, the character five star for the month. Ah, uh, Athena. The, the character who was pretty much, like, a staple already. And they five-starred her. And you were, you were talking now, about this previously. She's now a, a staple again. Yeah, she's gone from being a staple to being a staple in the exact same places, but better at um, one thing. <laughs> uh, the really nice thing is that at level 90, you get a dispel cancel on your, your skill one. That is nice. It is nice. But... Um, we were talking about this where it's like she's like Urius, where she was already on all of your hard mode teams, if you could possibly uh, put her there. And she's been upgraded, and now she's on all of your hard mode teams? Yeah, don't, don't think about it too hard. Uh, so the, the one thing that I was referring to that makes her, that she's uh, become better at. So her new, her level 100, uh, I'm skipping straight to that part. It's a new skill, and it uh, gives you Team Unchallenged. Um, so before, and I'm, I'm using a very specific examples, um, before, in order to survive Paradise Lost, um, Fire had to do eat one of two things. It was either uh, bring... Um, it was either bring Athena and a five, a four-star Prometheus. Correct. Right. Uh, but the thing is that Paradise lost uh, at ten percent, and uh, the uh, the the two that are below ten percent, you can't summon for those. So, uh, Fire had to bring. I think it was Siegfried, because also correct. Yeah, you had to win switch and then wind cut with him this frees up that slot yeah so it frees up a slot if you're trying to solo fire um lucilius which is one of the harder ones admittedly so it's like so that's one of the things that it does now uh, all right so let's start from the top though so level 80 the uh the ca upgrade this is like the most meaningless of the ca upgrades that I've, they've done i think I thought that I actually would have thought they would have made it a hundred percent to for a thirty percent armored, but uh, no, they they decided to just put ten percent wind cut down. I'm mean, wind attack down. Yeah, so armor, the armor was okay, but people sometimes complain that it was unreliable because it's not a hundred percent. It's like okay, yeah, it's a seventy percent chance to get thirty percent cut. Uh, seventy percent is good, but it's not rely. It's not. It's relatively reliable, but not like if if there's a chance of it failing, you just have to assume that it's gonna fail. You're like, mm. there's been so many times, so many actual other times where armored is actually just 100 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. If you look at other characters, mm -hmm. so and then the thing is that the hit uh, hit to wind attack. So we've talked a little bit about this before. Also, uh, element attack down does overcap in your favor. So if you already have 50 percent attack down, then wind attack down or other elemental attack down will uh, will still actually take effect, and you'll take less damage. This is on a character that could that could change the element and uh, uh, damage that is, that's incoming. At least right. there's that. There is a very popular character who gives fifteen percent wind attack down, 
in in the sheep but what i was looking into is that the sheep has become less and less of a staple on specifically like full fully hard content a lot of uh, char people have like moved on to uh, christmas nemone for example for the, that slot in order to um, give your mc permanent win switch and so like that will often uh, help you out a lot more than like 50 percent uh, debuff resist or things like that so the fact that it does not uh overwrite or it is not better than uh, the um anila wind attack down is less of an issue than it would have been like a year ago so that's it's it's okay, but it's pretty unexciting, given it, that this is a five star. Nothing trade. happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Let's be honest. Nothing happened. Yeah. All right. Um. So level ninety. Um. Level ninety is not the passive upgrade, is it? It's the shield of the gods plus plus. Yeah. So, before, her refresh was straight up dookie by modern yeah, 400 yeah by modern gbf standards it was straight up dookie it was 400 a turn for three turns on a seven turn cooldown so it was like and it was attached to two other really good things but it was not good yeah so it doubles it it's now 800 which is still not great but we're going back to this whole thing that we also got this the spell cancel yeah but, but you know what i'll take it because we got the spell cancel on it um and then I haven't earned these yet, but the uh, support skill, Goddess of the Shield, is oh no, Searing Crimson upgrades to Correct. give the entire rest of the team her uh, boost as well, which is 30% CA damage, 10% cap? Sorry, you said it. You were right on the numbers. Okay. Did you remember that uh, we had this, DJ? Uh, when I'm in Lucy, yes. Okay, that that's very fair, because I was like, I completely forgot that she had that passive, honestly. Yeah, it only really matters with stuff like Lucy when, he, and that's only when he's burned. Yeah, so you've, that, <laughs> you've played fire a lot more than I have uh, in that fight, so I would trust you a lot on that. Okay, so you know, other than MC, she's the only one camping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that so that actually does matter against say someone like Belial uh, not yeah Belial because um if you're not specced into it then you do kind of struggle to hit the 15 million against him so that helps there and it helps against like Bales above to hit like the your 10 million um breaks so all right Given your what you said about how it really does help in hard content, I'm I'm coming around on this one. I like it better than I initially did. It just goes in perspective of fire actually has sometimes troubles doing the, enough damage because if you're if you're if you're playing a def defensive fire, right? Your most of your source of damage isn't that high, or it might be multiple, but it's not technically high enough in a single turn. The other thing I was thinking about just now is that for characters like Athena, Nemone, um, Kumbira specifically, the the big knock against their post-turn skill damage is that it doesn't count for omens. It doesn't count for hit count. It doesn't count for damage count. So turn. It's, it's after the turn. And so, yeah, like this is something that helps more than I expected in something like V2 also for, for LER when you have to try and do a damage uh, um, check when you're not, you know, super spec'd out. That's pretty useful. I'm I'm coming around on this one more than I thought I would, DJ. So thanks for that. <laughs> it's, it's because you, when you put it in perspective, like, most of the content in a game, you're already hitting calf. Right, but when you're actually using Athena in the places where you're going to use Athena, right? Yep. Alright, I accept this. Uh, and then her level 100 is this Palladium, and so we've got to talk about uh, this this part right here. So the ready in turns, the the ready in ten turns. She has an ultimate. She has an eternal ultimate, and it is one. Uh, it is one reusable, so it's not really an eternal ultimate. 
two, it's one hit unchallenged, which a bunch of grand characters, admittedly, have available on turn one. Uh, Veil is useful. Debuff immunity is never, you know, not... Well, okay, there are some cases in which it's not useful, but it's rare. But when it's turn 10 and you can't hit it turn 1, like, is that actually that useful? I mean, well, why are you getting hit on turn 1 or the unchallenged part, at least, right? <laughs> right. The Veil, oh. The Veil exists, I guess. Yeah, so... So having it be on a 10 turn cooldown, um, the other team unchallenged that I can think of in the game. So it's 12 turn cooldown for Noah's team unchallenged, which he can lower by his EMP. So it's random if it lowers or not. There's 12 turn cooldown on the Grand Alexial team unchallenged. But both no. of those are available on turn one and can be Keelaned before turn 10. Yeah, there's a comment in chat. It's like uh, it's conjunction. Good for, it's good for Lucilius uh, uh, PL because of turn acceleration, and that's all I can think about. Oh yeah, Summer Lucio is also on a 12 turn cooldown. So, so after about turn 50, then you're ahead of the grand characters and the limited characters. Conjunction is a 14 turn cooldown, Dom. It's but it is better than unchallenged though. For conjunction, it's more than one hit. It's all of the hits for that turn that you uh, you, you negate. Huh. <laughs> like it. This is one of those things where people were looking at going. They were really, really careful about not making this kit too good. <laughs> that she would just invalidate like future defensive characters or just other characters even attempting to be defensive. But like. There's, there's something that I was thinking about. We were like, uh, we were looking at Miss Miranda when she released, right? And mm -hmm. we we're like, hey, Miss Miranda has Tiva challenged. Debuff immunity oh. to all allies, damage immunity, yeah. one hit, dispel cancel, one time. So what? It's the standard twelve turn cooldown, right? On Miss Miranda. Oh. Um. You know, you're not going to be taking Miss Miranda to the hardest content in, in most split cases, I think. So, you know, they're not really interfering with each other. It's just kind of funny that they we were like, oh, so this is what she's here for. She's here yeah. to provide Veil and debuff immunity and dispel cancel. And Hear me out now. Hear me out now. Mm -hmm. Technically use Miss Miranda to set up Paradise Lost. <laughs> to, give, to give Lucy a... Uh, a dot in order to... Or, or the wing. Or the yeah. wing. That's what needs it. And then you unchallenge that. <laughs> Look, I, I took you... Uh, I took your advice on hard content for fire, but I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's an option. <laughs> it is an option. It's an option. <laughs> or you can just not bring Miss Miranda and you can just continue bringing Athena... <laughs> <laughs> who has all of oh, wild. <laughs> who has all of these things and her dispel cancels on a seven turn cooldown instead of a twelve turn cooldown. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm also looking at like all the possible uh, veils and fire, by the way. This the the lowest is eight. <laughs> the lowest cooldown is eight, so yeah. is that Magisa? That's Magisa. Okay. Uh tech Mimilamos is is uh uh, dash mark because it can't be recasted. You cannot recast Mim Lemels, it's true. But it's available Aquas third years and Aquas third years and Vera are nine turns. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that both both of those are not like regularly acquirable characters. The the Aquas the Aquas are um they're free and I believe they're inside stories now, aren't they? They made they are inside stories. stories. Yeah. So they're always available. And then Vera, you have to pay upwards of like sixty dollars or so for for the DVD in order to get the code for her. But yeah, um, like it's not necessarily impressive. They're making an already great character medium better. And once again, we go back to Yuri's on this one. Like, 
the Urius one was tied to an event. Athena's is not tied to an event. So, like, what are your thoughts on them picking Athena as opposed to, say, any of the long laundry list that we went through of characters in Fire that were just like, no, this character could stand a rework. How do you know that she's not going to be in the 37-year-old at a sauna event? I just call it a hunch that the event, <laughs> the time a 37-year-old former Imperial soldier got his life in order by awakening to the greatness that is Sana's, um, is not going to be starring Athena. Hey, that's wild. I already put my thoughts about this, by the way, Dom. Go back two weeks ago when, or three weeks ago when, when I uh, when we first like, heard the announcement, it was Athena. Yeah, it's like you said, Eliza. You said I remember you saying Eliza. Needs it. Like Hellas is also someone who who, who needs it. Maybe Hellas is actually the only, is the only one of, of that of uh that area that doesn't have a uh four star or five star. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you're right, because Event Noish has a five star. Yep. I'm gonna I'm going to just casually look at who has the least EMPs for me and see which ones need the most help here. Um no, those are those are characters that are just just new and don't need help. Alright, so Agielba got a rework already. Therese, I think Therese is okay, but I don't. I, they, they, they. She could use a five star. I think. I think I would be okay with a Therese five star. I mean, what we're we gonna do to differentiate her from Bayo, though? That's that's a really tough question. I don't know. Or you Zalha Malina is a character that has been reworked at least once and still just. Is a non-character. Sometimes that she is a, came out in 2016. <laughs> sometimes she is a backline passive. <laughs> Please help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, I use Callan, so I'm not gonna talk any, any shit about no, her. There's Eliza. We've, we're not looking at any tie-ins. We 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 found Eliza. The only reason Hellas has this many EMPs is because of Wind Hellas. <laughs> well, yeah, that character's sick. And then the re okay, so the rest of these I've actually used to a decent degree. Clarice doesn't have a, have a five star, huh? Oh yeah, you're right. Clarice is up here because of light Clarice. <laughs> oh boy, all right. For a second, she has a, a skill two that's non essential. It's so bad. This oh god, yeah, she has old um, what is it? She has old duration. It's been so long since we talked about this that I forgot his name. All right, Fire Clarice, right. we're putting you on the list too. So Fire Clarice, Aliza, Zalha Melina. Like uh, all the other Clarices are good. <laughs> I actually have used Agielba, um, the new rework for him. I think he's fun. Like, and unfortunately, I well, they did replace his voice actor, so he's eligible for five star at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, when we when we go down and just dig through like the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> in fire it's like yeah these are characters that i really really think could use the uh the five star and rework the, on the same day treatment i do wonder what they would do to therese to make her different from summer bea that is a that is a good question that i don't think i am qualified to uh to answer new gondagoza is fun i love playing gondagoza now <laughs> hilarious he's so good i think percival would probably be on the list but he's already gotten his five star and he, he had his time in the sun he's well he he also has reworks yeah he's he's been five starred and reworked all right anyway um so that's pretty much it for this week in uh grand blue fantasy however this coming week is a big one <laughs> So, all right, DJ. So, what happens just plain tomorrow? What happens tomorrow? Tomorrow we have um, Rage GB versus semifinals, which is yeah. where which is where we're going to get the reveal of the final character of season two of GB versus. I I just I don't I want an evoker. 
it would be cool to so just hit here a new, uh order a new world Ooh, that you're picking that's big brain you're picking a character because you want their background music their theme song in the game Heck. i like it i really like it that is that is enormous brain if i had to pick a character just to get their theme into the game I think it would be Nehan, actually. <laughs> Nehan's uh, theme being in uh, GV Versus would also be sick. All right. Welcome just for this. <laughs> There's, um, would it be a new mix of New World Order? Hell yeah, they would use a new mix. Um, there's also the comfy stream, which is thankfully not news, but we're going to be, well, I'm going to be staying up for it and watching it uh, like I always do, so... Uh, join us uh, tomorrow for that stream. Um, and then, we are, by the time we're doing this next week, the following things will also have happened that we're going to be talking about. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about the time a 37-year-old former Imperial soldier got his life uh, in order by awakening to the greatness that is Saunas. I, I love light novels. <laughs> um, we're going to be uh, talking about the first of uh, the summer characters because we are uh, we were told by KMR that we are getting the first summer character um, at the end of the month uh, premium gala like we did last year, which was when Co Summer Kolulu came out. Uh, we will also have Choregra for July, which will tell us um, what unite to expect from Unite and Fight. Uh, and uh, yeah, that'll that'll be the uh, the big news week, and then we'll be fully officially into the summer months of Grand Blue Fantasy, where a lot awaits us, a lot of news, a lot of characters, a lot of everything, a lot is happening. But, um, what's up? You kept saying that the comfy streams tomorrow. It's on the twenty seventh. It's the twenty seventh. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I'm looking at your tw your tweet for it. The Comfy Stream check so it's, checks air. Eighteen hundred so JSP versus tomorrow then. Comfy Stream in two days. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Uh, things are starting to run together. <laughs> All right. So GB versus first. That's exciting. All right. Anyway, so thanks for joining me, DJ. Thanks for thanks for correcting me. Um. Well. And yeah, like we were supposed to be getting the uh, the new main story, but we haven't heard anything about it. So assume that it was delayed. If it comes Wait, out, we'll actually find out uh, before before Comfy Stream. Yeah, hopefully. Well, they'll also hold up the side on Comfy Stream that just says there's no news and there's no new no giveaways. This is this is just for fun. That's when they do it before the Comfy Stream. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. All right. Thanks for joining me, DJ. Let's go watch zombies. Yeah, last episode. Oh, did you have to say that? I'm sad now. Fuck. It's going to be a live. They're going to announce something at the live, probably. We said that last time. That was three years ago. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we found out more uh, about revenge during Crunchyroll Expo. That was two years ago. It took them a while. Yeah, that's 2019. <laughs> I don't want to wait three more years for the next one. Maybe you just give it to Side Games yeah. Pictures. Blue movie. <laughs> the, the Aliens vs. Zombies movie? Uh, did you actually... So there was actually a part where they were in the hot air balloons, and oh. Honda was uh, asking for, for season two, three, and a movie. <laughs> three seasons in a movie? Is that... Wait, that's more than Love Live gets, because Love Live's standard is two seasons in a movie, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lot. But yeah, um, as Scrap King Keita says in chat, like I do hope that they take uh, that Psy Games Pictures takes over for it because Psy Games Pictures pays its animators, which is its industry revolution that they're starting to try and you know make a normal thing. Imagine being paid for your work, DJ. Wild. Couldn't be me. Anyway. Anyways. Like, <laughs>